Hello and welcome to be a theater German engineer explains oxygen not included. Today I have two builds for you and a few shenanigans on top of that. But first of all we are going to go over the liquid sulfur geyser tamer and then we're gonna go on to the natural gas geyser. So it's gonna stay interesting let's just jump right into it and see how that works out for us. And here we are with our first build. So let's take a look. Let's turn the overlay back on and pause the game. First of all, we're going to go over our power setup for our liquid sulfur geyser tamer. We have our power source on the left. We have a thermo aqua tuna with 1200 watts. Then we have a auto sweeper as well as a conveyor loader and a conveyor shutoff on the right. Total power consumption is 1450 watts. Really not that much. Next of all, let's go over our pipe overlay from the Thermo Aqua Tuner. We are coming out with our standard setup to ensure we are always looping, regardless if the Thermo Aqua Tuner is running or not. And all we are doing is we are cooling down our water basin down here. And then we're going to come back up and also cool down our steam turbine while we are at it. Pretty simple and straightforward as usual. In our conveyor overlay, it's getting a little bit more interesting. So let's zoom in on that and let's take a closer look. So we are having our auto sweeper right here. We have our liquid sulfur come down. It will cool down and solidify right in the spot right here where our conveyor rail thermos sensor is. Then our auto sweeper picks it up, puts it into our conveyor loader and our conveyor loader, of course, puts it well onto the conveyor. From here, we're going to come down all the way around and we're just going to take up as much space in this little area as we can. Go into our conveyor rail thermos sensor and then into our conveyor shutoff. The conveyor rail thermal sensor is set up to above 25 degrees in my case, which means if the temperature is above 25 degrees, we are going this route upwards and we're going to loop around again. It's kind of hidden behind the auto sweeper, but we are just going in a loop around and around up until it is cooled down to below 25 degrees. If it is below 25 degrees, our conveyor shutoff turns off and we're going straight out and we are dumping it right here. We can see it, we have currently two stacks, one with 25 tons and one with 6.4 tons of sulfur laying right there, one with 22.3 degrees and the other with 25.3 degrees. You can of course set this up to whatever you want. Over here, the liquid pipe thermal sensor is set up to above 15 degrees Celsius. You can of course, once again, set it to whatever you want. We have polluted water in here, so you can actually go a little bit below zero degrees if you want to, but you have to keep in mind that the Thermo Aqua Tuna cools down our liquid by 14 degrees. So if we set it to above 15, our water in here should cool down to roughly one degree Celsius. So let's turn it on and let's run it while we are taking a quick look into our automation overlay just so we can see what we have. And it's not a hell of a lot. Our liquid pipe thermal sensor is hooked up to our Therma Aqua Tuner and our conveyor rail thermal sensor is hooked up to our conveyor shutoff. And that's already it. It's really that simple. And we can see it in action right here. Let's zoom in once again and we can see we are going through here and we are either dumping it or we are sending it once again around. If we speed it up a little bit, we may be able to see that our conveyor rail here can actually fill up. Currently, apparently that's not the case, so we are fine. But every once in a while, this here can fill up completely and it looks like it's stuck. It is not. It is perfectly fine. Even though the conveyor rail is completely full, we just going to load up our conveyor loader with up to 1000 kilograms. I just see that I accidentally built it out of steel. Obviously, that is not necessary since our water is at 15 degrees. We can build all this stuff here out of copper or whatever else you have laying around. It literally does not matter. And I'll let it run for a little bit so you can see what I meant with filling up the conveyor rail. The conveyor rail is completely filled with sulfur, but it is not stopping us at all. We are just accumulating potentially a little bit more right here or better to say inside our conveyor load. But even that is not really a problem when we take a look storing zero out of a 1000 kilograms. So we are constantly putting it onto the rail. There is no problem at all may look a little bit weird every once in a while but it works this is the simplest design that i could come up with and also the smallest design that i could come up with which incorporates a thermo aqua tuna and of course steam turbine to get at least a little bit of the power back currently about 332 watts let's move on to the natural gas geyser and here is my version of the natural gas geyser tamer so let's bear with me because there will be a little bit of explanation that is needed for it. But let's start with the power overlay. So let's see. First of all, we have two natural gas generators that produce 800 watts each, which comes out to be a total of 1600 watts. And we have them connected with heavy watt joint plates. 
Then we just come through here. Also have a liquid pump down here as well as a smart battery all connected together just with the heavy watt wire. Then we come out here with a heavy watt joint plate once again. And this here is our power output where we can feed it to wherever we want. In my particular case, just for the sake of this build, I went all the way up to the top, all the way around into another heavy watt joint plate, which is just in here so we can actually keep our hydrogen in here which we use to cool down our steam turbine. And I also put a large power transformer in here. The large power transformer is only here so we can actually have some power consumers for a system. If we don't have any power consumers, it will just never run. So what are we doing here? We are powering our thermo aqua tuner as well as our gas pump that we use to get the natural gas out of our chamber where we have our geyser and even our two infinite storage pumps I have hooked up to the same system. Once again, the reason for this is only so we have actually some power consumers since I don't actually have a base here. What you would usually do is you would just come out here, connect it up to your main power grid, come out here, connect it once again up to your main power grid, and then wherever your power is coming from, feed a conductive wire in and power your thermal aqua tuner as well as your gas pumps with that. Pretty simple and straightforward. Next of all, in our liquid pipe overview, we can see our thermal aqua tuner. We are coming out with our standard setup. We're cooling down our two natural gas generators and then on the bottom here i even have more radiant liquid pipes in here which are really only for the smart battery it's probably not just probably it's definitely complete overkill but better too much than not enough and then we are even cooling down our natural gas. This is just so we can actually take this heat energy out of here and put it up to here so we can get a little bit more power out of our steam turbine. And on top of that, because I'm using an infinite storage, I need to make sure that the temperature of our gas stays below 100 degrees or our water in here will evaporate and we do not want that. Natural gas geyser, let's see erupts with 150 degrees that's why we need to get the temperature out if you would put crude oil in here for example it literally wouldn't matter you wouldn't have to cool this here at all next on the list is the gas overview so let's see it's very simple once again all we have down here in the bottom is the gas pump that provides insulated gas pipes all the way over to our infinite storage our infinite storage comes back up and provides natural gas to our two generators and our two generators have outputs for carbon dioxide. And the carbon dioxide will be moved just into another infinite storage. I really have no use for it at all. You could vent it into space. If you have any slicksters and you want to mess with those, go ahead. Whatever you want to do with it. I just store it here temporarily since I once again have no use for it at all. The other thing that's coming out of the natural gas generator is polluted water. Polluted water is all that we're going to accumulate down here and then we pump it wherever we want to. You can use it for a variety of things. For example, since it has no germs in it and we can take a look at it, it's completely clean. You can just filter through a water sieve and you can use it in your base. Or you can, for example, feed it to pinch of pepper nuts or whatever else you have that may require polluted water. It comes out in this particular setup at 40 degrees. If we take a look here, polluted water, it will be at least 40 degrees or hotter if the building is hotter. The building is absolutely not hotter, so it comes out at 40 degrees. Carbon dioxide comes out at 110 degrees. Does it really matter? No. Again, I just put it over here for right now. We could just vent it into space and be done with it. That's probably the best option in most cases. What do we have in regards to automation? Let's see. We have our smart battery. Our smart battery hooks up to our natural gas generators, the top one and the bottom one. And then we have here a hydro sensor that is connected to our pump an atmos sensor that is connected to our gas pump and of course my wonderful signal switch so i can control the infinite storage as well and once again the infinite storage over here is of course optional you don't need to have it it just never hurts so you have a buffer the atmos sensor down here is set up to above 500 grams so only if the pressure in here is above 500 grams we are actually turning on our pump just as our hydro sensor is set up to above 500 kilograms so only if you have 500 kilograms of water in here we will actually turn on our pump is that necessary no you can literally set it up to whatever you want our smart battery here is set up to a high threshold of 95 and a low threshold of 30 but that is of course dependent of how you want to use it in your particular base the high threshold is when it turns off the gas generators and the low threshold is when it turns them on. So let's dive a tiny little bit deeper into actual geysers and how they work. So let's take a look here on the right. So over here on the right, we have our familiar pane. The only thing is different from your game to mine is that I use a mod for these calculations right here. You will not be able to see most of this stuff. You will only see what's here on the top. 
there is a mod and it's called automatic geyser calculation i will post a link in the description down below if you're interested in this yourself and you will see in a few seconds how powerful it is so what does this particular geyser here do first of all natural gas 345.4 grams per second at 150 degrees eruption period 254 seconds every 477 seconds and the active period is 70.3 cycles every 110.7 cycles that means the dormancy period is about 40 cycles or so long and now is where the mod comes in our average active flow is 183.9 grams per second so in the active period when it is not dormant it is on average putting out 183.9 grams per second. The eruption buffer should be 41 kilograms. As long as we have 41 kilograms, we will be able to maintain 183.9 grams of constant flow at all time. Total average flow, which calculates the dormancy period in, is 116.8 grams. And the dormancy buffer should be 2830.7 kilograms. So if you want to run this thing here basically constantly, 24-7 at 116.8 grams per second, you need a buffer of 2,830.7 kilograms. Is that necessary and how do we use those numbers? So the average active flow is 183.9 grams and our natural gas generator here per piece uses 90 grams per second. So while the natural gas geyser is active, we can use two of those 100% of the time and even get a tiny little bit extra out of it, which is why I only built two. Could you run more with it? Yes. Why is that? So let's run it and we will see. I'm going to turn up the speed and you can see they are not always running. Even with the setup here where everything is powered by those two generators. And when we take a look at our wire, our wire says the potential load is 1920 watts, which is obviously above our 1600 that those two provide. We will still never use it 100% of the time. Even in your base, however you have built it, this is probably not going to be the only power you have. You have coal generators, you have hamster wheels, whatever you have sitting around, you are able to power more than just two. Probably not during a dormancy period, so you will have to be ready for that but you can probably hook up four to this year and be perfectly fine in most cases this is a very very powerful and very very cheap setup what you also have to keep in mind is your type of geyser and what do i mean with that let's take another look down here in the bottom i have built a total of 24 different vents and geysers two times natural gas in the low version and the high version and then just to show that that is true for everything else I built some random ones which are water geysers here in the top so let's see what we have here here in the bottom we have an average flow of 176.1 177 178 179 180 169 170 171 so they are all fairly close but they are not the same and they can be much, much more different than they are shown here. It literally depends on what you get. Also, the active periods here are vastly different. You need to keep all of this here in mind when you take a look of how you're going to utilize your geysers. Also here on the top, of course, it's true for natural gas geysers. The average flow varies vastly from 159 all the way up to what do we have here? The highest 179, 183, 187. So from 159 to 187, it may not sound like a lot, but it makes a huge difference in the long run. And of course, for the water geysers, the same thing is true as well. And I'm just going through them one by one by one so you can actually see the difference on your screen. This is just to prove that you need to take a look at what you actually have. This is completely randomized. The more I built, the more different they are. I did not set that up. It's completely randomized by the game. So up here, just for the sake of showing you what it looks like when it runs, I'm actually going to put in another power consumer. Give me one second. And here we have it. I have built a Rappo generator here on the left with some uranium ore around it. And the reason for it is it uses quite a lot of power, which is 480 watts. So it drains our battery even in slow speed like nothing. And here we have it. Our natural gas generators actually turn on and they're providing power and of course, wonderful polluted water at a reasonable temperature. Also the carbon dioxide, but that is really negligible in my opinion. Also our pumps in here every once in a while they have to turn on so they can provide fresh natural gas to our natural gas generators. Pretty simple and straightforward setup, just how I like it. And let's move on to the last thing that I want to show you. 
And over here, we have the slightly boring version. We have the carbon dioxide vent, the carbon dioxide geyser, the chlorine geyser, and the chlorine gas vent. And the truth is, I don't know what to do with any of those. You don't really need any chlorine unless you have like a puffed farm that you want to feed and get some bleach stone out of it. But it's really not necessary. I have never needed it in any of my playthroughs. There is so much bleach stone just lying around that I have never seen the need that I actually produce more with a puffed wrench. So it is up to you. It is possible, but in my case, I just build a wall around it and call it a day. And that is true for both of them. Also for the carbon dioxide vents, you could theoretically use them for slicksters. That is absolutely true. But once again, I usually get my carbon dioxide from other sources. There's so much things that actually produce carbon dioxide that we can just siphon off from somewhere else. You may have seen it in my let's plays. There's just so much carbon dioxide coming from all sources and we're just accumulating it over there in an infinite storage. And I literally have eight tiles with about 10 tons or so each. I literally don't know what to do with it no vent needed for that in my opinion it's completely pointless to waste any materials for this year more than the tiles that you need to actually tile it in but with that all i have left to say is thank you very much for watching if you enjoy the content please subscribe to the channel leave a like on the video and comment down below we still have a few more vents, geysers and of course volcanoes to go so it's gonna stay interesting please let me know what you think and with that i say thank you and peace